Today, let's talk about pentatonic scales, what they are, how to play them on the banjo, and how you can use them to improvise like this. Pentatonic scales have been used for thousands of years, and you can find them in almost any style of music. And there are a lot of different types of pentatonic scales. Pentatonic really just means five notes. But today let's focus on the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic scales. But first, if you're interested in getting the tablature for everything in this lesson, and all of my lessons, as well as bonus practice tips and live streams, all kinds of stuff that you can't find here on YouTube, then you should go to patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. And if you don't mind, do me a huge favor and subscribe to this channel and like this video. That's a great way to support the work that I'm doing here, and I really appreciate it. Anyway, what are major pentatonic scales? Well, first let's think about the major scale. In this case, we'll think about the G major scale. If we take out the fourth and seventh note from the G major scale, then we'll have five notes, G, A, B, D, and E. That's the G major pentatonic scale. So you can either think of this scale as being a reduced form of the major scale, or you can think about it as being the one, two, three, five, and six in the key of G. So in order to put that on the banjo, here are the most convenient shapes to play the G major pentatonic scale all over the neck. But keep in mind that because we're playing this all over the neck, we're not necessarily always gonna start and end on G. So we wanna keep a mental note of where in each shape the note G is. Okay, so now let's talk about minor pentatonic scales. In this case, let's think about the E minor scale first. If we take out the second and sixth note of the E minor scale, then we'll have E, G, A, B, and D. That's the E minor pentatonic scale. But wait, remember the G major pentatonic scale? That was G, A, B, D, and E. That's actually the same notes as the E minor pentatonic scale. So really, these are the same scale, just looking at them from a different perspective. That means that if you want to play the E minor pentatonic scale, you could, and actually should, play all of the same scale patterns that we just looked at for the G major pentatonic scale. Now, there are a couple different ways that we can look at the relationship between these two keys. Between E and G, like E minor pentatonic and G major pentatonic, there are three half steps, or three frets. So you could think of any pair of these major and minor pentatonic scales as being three frets apart. Like, for instance, the C major pentatonic scale has the same notes as the A minor pentatonic scale. And the D major pentatonic scale has the same notes as the B minor pentatonic scale. And another way to think about this is if you're in a certain key, like G for instance, if you think about chords in terms of numbers, like one, four, five, two, six, well, the minor pentatonic scale that's related to the major pentatonic scale is on the six minor chord. So in the key of G major, the six minor chord is E minor. So you can think about it as being the G major pentatonic scale based on the one chord and the E minor pentatonic scale based on the six minor chord. And I don't mean to get bogged down in music theory here because this is really just a couple different ways to look at the relationship between major and minor pentatonic scales. You can think about it as the distance in frets or the interval or the relationship between keys. It doesn't really matter as long as you find a way that you can make that relationship so you don't have to think about two completely separate scales all the time. So let's look at all of those patterns again, 
but this time we're going to highlight the root G for G major pentatonic and E for E minor pentatonic in two different colors. It's the same scale, but we're going to look at them in two different ways. And this is kind of how I like to practice these scales. I like to play the same set of shapes, but consider which different keys I could be referring to. For instance, F major, D minor, B flat major, G minor, G major, E minor. Okay, now we can get a lot deeper into the different ways to play this scale, but first let's talk a little bit about how you can use it to improvise. To keep it really simple, we're gonna use the major pentatonic scale on major chords and the minor pentatonic scale on minor chords. Let's take another look at the example from the beginning of this video. It's a 1-4-5 progression in G, and every time the chords switch, I switch to the corresponding major pentatonic scale. One thing you might have noticed is that I'm not playing only pentatonic scales. You could play only pentatonic scales, and in some contexts, I'm sure that's a really cool thing to do. But more often than not, you're probably going to be using it a little bit more sparingly. Even what I played in that example is a lot more pentatonically dense than I would probably ever play in a real world situation. The other thing you might have noticed is that I wasn't just playing those scales up and down. And I wasn't just playing those same patterns that I showed you before. So let's get into some other ways that you can play this scale. Using the shapes that I've already showed you, here are some different patterns that you can use to be more flexible while playing this scale. So far with all of these shapes, we've used a basic single string technique, either thumb index or thumb index thumb middle. But you can also play these shapes using forward and backward rolls to play them much faster. We're just gonna make one small change to these shapes. We're gonna take the last note of each shape on the first string and we're gonna move it to the fifth string. That's gonna make it a lot easier to do something like this. Another thing we can do is extend these shapes beyond one octave. If we take this G major or E minor pentatonic shape and play the last note B with our thumb, then we can reach up to the 12th fret on the first string with our little finger. And we can extend all of our pentatonic shapes just like this. And 
to take it one step further, if you take those extended pentatonic shapes and play them with the left and right hand patterns that we talked about before, you'll get some really interesting results like this. So folks, I hope you found this interesting and helpful. And if you're looking to go a little bit deeper with how to practice and use these shapes, then you can go to patreon.com slash Eli Gilbert Banjo. This week's bonus practice tip is all about how to practice and use pentatonic scales just like these. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and like this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.